Looking to produce outsized dividend income today? Like dividend growth, but prefer higher yields? Want to know about five cheap dividend growth stocks yielding over 5%? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before we get into today's content, if you want exclusive access to my personal six-figure stock portfolio and alerts on any new investments I make, check out the Patreon link in the description below. Juicy, juicy dividends. Who doesn't love getting paid for doing nothing? Well, other than waking up and holding on to the shares that you already bought, but that's pretty easy, isn't it? There are a number of dividend growth stocks out there offering big dividends. I'm talking about yields of over 5%. Plus, these dividends are growing year in and year out like clockwork that protects your purchasing power against inflation. And if all of that weren't good enough already, some of these dividend growth stocks look downright cheap. Because whether it's socks or stocks, we all like a good deal. Today, I wanna tell you about five cheap dividend growth stocks offering 5% plus yields. Ready? Let's dig in. The first dividend growth stock I wanna highlight is Kinder Morgan Inc, stock ticker KMI. Kinder Morgan is a North American energy infrastructure company. Kinder Morgan specializes in owning and operating pipelines and terminals that move oil and gas. Since Kinder Morgan operates or owns an interest in approximately 82,000 miles of pipelines and 143 terminals, this is one of the largest infrastructure companies in all of North America. No matter what happens to the price of underlying commodities, Kinder Morgan gets paid. It's effectively a quote unquote toll booth for energy commodities. Now, it won't knock your socks off with growth, but the yield is outstanding. Kinder Morgan's stock is yielding 6.3%. Wow, that's some serious income, even in a world in which rates have risen. Now, again, getting back to my prior point, you do have to sacrifice some growth in order to access that kind of yield. No free lunch, you can never have it all. And that'll be a recurring theme throughout today's video. Kinder Morgan has increased its dividend for five consecutive years, which is a track record that's shorter than it ought to be because of a 2016 dividend cut that came on the heels of a mismanaged balance sheet. The three-year dividend growth rate is 5.1%, and I think it's reasonable to expect low single-digit dividend growth per year based on forward guidance for distributable cash flow per share. The payout ratio is 52.1%. That's healthy. There is nothing demanding about the valuation here. The best way to value a pipeline business like this is to look at the multiple of cash flow. Kinder Morgan is guiding for $2.13 in DCF per share for this fiscal year, putting the Ford multiple at 8.3. To be fair, that's actually pretty close to its own five-year average, which is near eight. However, this stock has been in the penalty box for years, and justifiably so. But we invest in where a business is going, not where it's been. By just about every standard, this is a very low and undemanding multiple of cash flow. For income-oriented dividend growth investors, a well-covered 6.3% yield on a cheap name with recurring revenue is awfully interesting. The second dividend growth stock I want to bring to your attention is Altria Group Inc, stock ticker MO. Altria is one of the world's largest tobacco companies. This is a quote unquote sin stock that works for some, not for others, and that's okay. Me, I'm a fan of personal freedoms. If an adult chooses to buy and consume a legal product, more power to them, and I'm happy to profit from that. Well, Profit Altria does, and they return most of that profit back to their shareholders in the form of a massive dividend. Altria's stock is yielding 
8.5%. The stock can move sideways and still earn an 8.5% annual return. As long as it doesn't decline much, you've got a pretty nice floor on your return based on just the dividend alone. Again though, you're not gonna get much growth here. This is a mature business selling a product in secular decline. It's a bit of a melting ice cube in some ways, but the ice cube is huge and appears to have many more years of melting in front of it before it's in danger of disappearing. That's been true for decades already, as evidenced by Altria's 53 consecutive years of dividend increases, making it a rare dividend king. The 10-year dividend growth rate is 8.1%. Although more recent dividend raises have been in the 4% range, the 74.5% payout ratio based on fiscal year 2023 guidance for adjusted EPS at the midpoint is high and constrains the dividend growth, but Altria has been navigating a high payout ratio for many years. This stock looks modestly undervalued to me. Based on that aforementioned adjusted earnings per share guidance, the forward PE ratio is 8.8. .8. So we've got a PE ratio that's pretty close to where the yield is, both with an eight handle. That's remarkable. Not something you see very often. That said, Altria has been cheap for years. The market has been sniffing out the challenges and secular decline in its core product, and that's led to compressing multiples. Again though, I'll note that the yield gets you to a pretty good return all by itself. The business just has to avoid total collapse. We last analyzed and valued Altria in August, estimating fair value for the business at nearly $48 per share. The stock's price is currently below $45. Decent upside, but it's really that yield that's stands out if you're okay with the nature of the products and their secular decline, as well as the debt load, it's a compelling income play. The third dividend growth stock I wanna bring up is Truist Financial Corp, stock ticker TFC. Truist is an American bank holding company. Boy, it's not often that you'll see a bank on a list like this, but we are in strange times. That's because the idiosyncratic failure of a few banks has sent bank stocks reeling on the fear of contagion. But here's the thing about Truist. This is one of the largest banks in the US. It's the seventh largest US commercial bank by deposits. If Truist has problems, the entire country has problems. The failure of Truist would require a kind of cataclysmic event that would have me worried about much more than a particular stock. But when others are fearful, that's typically a good time to consider being greedy. And while you wait for a rebound to play out, you're getting paid handsomely. Truist stock is yielding 6.4%. To put that in perspective, that's nearly twice as high as its own five-year average yield. The stock usually offers a competitive yield, but 6.4% is highly unusual and really quite outrageous. And unlike the other names in today's list, you even get a nice growth kicker here. That's because the stock is more of an accidental high yielder. Truist has increased its dividend for 12 consecutive years with a 10-year dividend and growth rate of 10.2%. Even if the banking issues cause more regulation and less growth, that much of a higher starting yield can make up for a lot of it. Another factor that stands out is the payout ratio, which is 47%. You rarely get a low payout ratio with a high yield like this, but it's a pretty unique situation. Also unique is the valuation, which is shockingly low. A US bank will usually command a price to book ratio between one and two, depending on the quality and growth of the bank. The five-year average price to book ratio for Truist is 1.2. So it was on the low end already, but it's now at 0.8. That's the kind of depressed multiple that you only see when a bank is in crisis, which just doesn't seem to be warranted at all for Truist itself. We went over this bank not long ago and valued the firm at just about $53 per share. I see tremendous upside here on one of the largest banks in the US. Meanwhile, you're collecting a 6.4% yield. Tough to complain about any of this. The fourth dividend growth stock we have to discuss is Verizon Communications Inc, stock ticker VZ. Verizon is a multinational telecommunications conglomerate. Let's get the obvious out of the way. The US telecommunications industry is mature and saturated. If you're looking for a compounding machine, this is the last place you'd look. However, on the flip side, demand is strong. Try to take someone's smartphone away from them. 
ain't gonna happen. Mobile data and mobile communication is practically as necessary to people these days as water and electricity. That creates cash cows like Verizon and what a cash cow it is. Verizon stock is yielding 6.6%. When you're getting a yield that high, the business just doesn't have to grow very much in order to provide a satisfactory annualized total return, which I viewed to be a market like 10%. You're more than 60% of the way there with just the dividend here. Indeed, Verizon isn't growing very much, which relates back to what I just mentioned. The 10 year dividend growth rate of 2.5% shows that low growth still for income oriented dividend growth investors in your 7% yield is hard to pass up. And with a payout ratio of 55.5%, based on midpoint adjusted EPS guidance for fiscal year 2023, this outsized dividend appears to be fairly safe. The business isn't growing much, true, but I think the low valuation is already factoring that in. Based on that adjusted earnings per share guidance, the forward price earnings ratio is only 8.4. Even by Verizon's low standards, that's an unusually undemanding PE ratio. For context, its own five-year average PE ratio is 11.1. .1. Every multiple here is showing a disconnect. Another good example is the price to sales ratio of 1.2, which is well off of its own five-year average of 1.7. This this isn't the kind of stock that'll make you wealthy tomorrow or even a year from now. It's not a perfect business, growth is muted, and there's a lot of debt. But it's a cheap cash cow that isn't dying, and that might just be good enough. The fifth dividend growth stock we have to have a conversation about is WP Carry Inc., stock ticker WPC. WP Carry is a diversified net lease real estate investment trust. If you want to own commercial real estate, but you don't want to deal with the massive difficulties of trying to build a property portfolio by yourself from scratch, buying shares in a real estate investment trust like WP Carry can make a lot of sense. A REIT like this offers you the opportunity to instantly own a slice of a diversified portfolio of properties that are already scouted, financed, leased, and managed. WP Carry's portfolio of nearly 1,500 properties are nearly 100% occupied and leased out to over 390 tenants across all kinds of industries. WP Carry collects that growing rent for shareholders and then sends that out via a large growing dividend. WP Carry's stock is yielding 5.7%. And this isn't some high yield junk stock either. WP Carry is a stalwart REIT. The company has increased its dividend for 26 consecutive years, and I foresee many more years of dividend growth ahead. Now, the 10 year dividend growth rate of 6.1% is undercut by recent dividend raises that have been in the low single digit range. However, because WP Carry has CPI linked rent escalators built into many of their contracts, the next year or two could spark a dividend and growth renaissance. Meanwhile, the payout ratio is 79.8% based on midpoint guidance for fiscal year 2023, adjusted funds from operations per share. That's pretty typical for a REIT. After a 15% correction in the stock price, the valuation it looks reasonable once again. One usually values a REIT based on cash flow or funds from operations. So the price to cash flow ratio is 14.9 after the correction. That's favorable relative to its own five year average of 16.1. Circling back around to that guidance, the forward price to adjusted funds from operations ratio is 13.9. That's somewhat analogous to a PE ratio on a normal stock. Now let's be realistic, a slow growth REIT like this shouldn't command super high multiples. But the reality is, it's just not. The market has often assigned WP Carry suitably low multiples. That said, the multiples right now are especially low. And what's surprising is WP Carry could be a beneficiary of recent inflation. This name is worth a close look in my view. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about these five cheap dividend growth stocks offering yields of over 5%. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including a link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. 
Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. Thank you.